What is up guys? My name is Mark Santa Maria. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the RC vlog. As you can see, back at my parents' house. It's been our favorite weekend pastime since it's coronavirus free. Anyways, this time I brought a Revo. I'm gonna drop my Revo today, but that's not what this video is all about. Today's video is all about, sorry, you can't see whenever the sun's behind me. Today's video is all about five things I wish I knew when I started RC and not RC racing, just RC in general. So let's get to it. So if you caught the last live feed, you would know that I'm thinking about getting a new RC travel vehicle. Right now I go to races in that, my Honda Accord. It's super nice, it's nice inside. It's a touring, so it has all the bells and whistles, but I'm throwing around the idea of maybe getting a Raptor, maybe an F-250. I could also get one of these, my dad's truck. It's the uh, Toyota Tacoma. Um, this one's a TRD, I don't think it's TRD Pro, but it is a TRD, but yeah, I don't, I don't know, what do you think? I love the color. That's the color I want to get of my uh, TRX4. My next TRX4 is going to be that color. But there she is. She's just waiting. Waiting for the batteries to charge up. I think I'm going to hop in the pool first and tell you the first two things or however many things I decide to tell you by the pool. All right. All right. Taking a big risk having my back to the pool when I do this. But I'm going to go in order of least important to most important that I wish I knew. Um, so the first one is I wish I would have bought... They're quiet back there. It scares me when they get... If you have kids, when it gets quiet, it's super scary. Anyways, the first thing I wish is, when I started, I wish I would have never bought tires that you had to mount. I wish I would have bought pre-mounts right off the bat. And I give you two examples. The first set of tires I ever bought were on-road tires for a Nitro Fortec. And they foams you have to glue together. And it sounds easy, right? Just mount the tires on the rims, glue the foam together, and be done. Nah, -uh. It was like one run. I blew the tire off. I didn't use the right glue or I didn't put enough glue. I didn't know how to do it. And that's a full set of tires I wasted. Wheels, tires, foams. I just blew the whole thing. And then the second set I bought, I bought uh, off-road tires for a Nitro Rustler. And I also didn't mount them correctly and the tire blew off. I blew the foam out. And it's never the same after the tire comes unglued. It's like it just doesn't work. So make sure you're really confident on how you mount tires before you just go buy tires that you have to mount. So. Stick with pre-mounts when you first start RC if you gotta buy wheels and tires. <sighs> All right, so the next thing I wish I knew was, I wish I knew about setting fail safes or having a throttle return spring. So a lot of people take that for granted. They don't know what it is, but basically what fail safe is, is whenever your remote stops communicating with your receiver, your ESC doesn't know what to do. So back in the day, we used to run FM radios and there was no fail safe. Like you had to buy a little module that would set your fail safe. What that fail safe did was as soon as your receiver stopped getting signal, it would make your ESC or your throttle go to neutral or break. So you could set basically what happens if you lost signal. Uh, most of the remotes these days have a 2-4 radio. So they have a fail safe, built in fail safe. But if you don't know how to set that fail safe correctly, you could have your car run away and possibly explode. So my situation when I had an engine explode, I had a Nitro Rustler and I started it up without the, uh, without the receiver on, without the remote on. So back to the whole throttle return spring, what a throttle return spring does is it basically closes the carburetor whenever the Nitro car loses power. So basically if your car loses power, it just goes back to uh, idle and it stops. Well, I didn't have a throttle return spring or a failsafe set up, which even if I had a failsafe, it would have broke anyways because, yeah, it didn't have any power. So make sure you have a failsafe and uh, throw return spring. But nonetheless, I started up my Rustler. I had the easy start on it. I was like trying to get it running. I was trying to figure out what happened. As soon as it fired up, it took off, took off, just took off down the field, hit, hit a fence, and the rod shot straight out of the bottom of the crankcase. So, yeah, make sure you set your failsafe and you have throttle return springs if you're using a nitro car. Holy crap guys, 
I seriously almost took the camera out. I did not try to do that. I turned my brake down hoping that I could kind of not flip over when I slammed on the brake and there wasn't enough brake and I almost took the camera out. Anyways, the third thing is I wish I would have had a solid set of tools. Don't skimp out on your tools whenever you first get an RC. Uh, there were many nights and many wrenching sessions where I was using like the tools that came with the kits or like the really small hand tools that people just give away for free or whatever I had in my toolbox. It was such a pain. I remember for the longest time I used that little itty bitty wheel wrench that came with the Traxxas cars. It works, but I mean, you got your fingers in there trying to tighten it up. It was like, my God. Whenever I got an actual uh, nut driver, it was so much easier. And I was like, oh, why did I wait so long to do this? So don't skip out on tools. Get you some good tools right when you start. Guys, I'm pretty sure my Revo was just the fastest vehicle that's ever gone down my dad's driveway. I hit 50 going down. <laughs> it is sketchy because there's a lot of rocks and crap and it's bumpy and it's lined with trees on each side. So if I lose control, it is not gonna be a good thing. Anyways, the fourth thing that I wish I would have known before I got into RC is I wish I wouldn't have gone Nitro. The very first car I got, Nitro Fortec. Nitro's intriguing. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, that's what got me wanting to do it so bad. I was thinking, man, I can run forever. I can run for hours on end because it runs on fuel. Well, now you can do that with batteries and you don't have to endure the pain and the learning curve of tuning nitro engines. A bad nitro weekend, a bad nitro engine, nitro problems, a runaway car that blows its engine, all that can really tarnish your thought on the whole RC hobby. So go electric at first, just get you an electric car and have fun, learn to drive, have fun. And when you're ready for the punishment they call nitro, hop in nitro, it's fun. Alright guys, so the last thing I wish I would have known when I first got an RC was probably, actually it's not probably, it is definitely, I wish I would have bought new and not used. So I bought a Nitro Fortec, a Nitro Fortec for about 250 bucks used. Right off the bat, I need a new body, I need new wheels and tires, I needed a glow plug. I um, mean that was probably over a hundred bucks. So all those things made the car come out to about 350 bucks, which was really close to 400 bucks, which brand new would have been 400 bucks. So honestly, I think if you're starting out, do your research, listen to your hobby shop, get an electric car and get a new one. Don't get a used one because if you need a new body or you need new tires right off the bat, you're in the hole. So anyways, hope you liked this video guys. If you did smash the like button, subscribe to my channel, turn on notification bell and you guys will see me next time. Hopefully I got no boogies hanging.